Stay focused on God, guys. Stay focused on God. No matter what tries to come your way, keep your focus on the Lord. I had a dream, and in my dream, it was like I was on my way to do something. And there were so many distractions and things along the way. And um, there's really no need to get into the details, but basically, that was what it was. It's like I was trying to get to a destination. I was trying to get to a specific place. But then there were, you know, people in the street deliberately, literally trying to keep me from being able to pass. And just so many things happen, guys. But at the end of it all, um, what I got from it and what I'm going to say to you is that sometimes on your way to your destiny with the Lord, on your path, on your walk with God, things can happen. And every battle is just not worth fighting because sometimes those battles is nothing more than a distraction. It's just sent to take you off course. And in my dream, it was like something happened and then, you know, I'm trying to get to the bottom of what was going on. And so I end up getting deterred and by the time I looked around I was completely turned around and while I don't have anything that I could think of in the natural that is going on in that way I as I began to just read my word and ponder on the dream this is what was brought to my attention not to become distracted not to become distracted and I want to share that with you guys every battle is not you don't need to every battle is not worth engaging in guys you know sometimes you can win the battle but not the war and sometimes things can happen as you are getting more focused on god distractions can come in the form of uh, a love interest distraction can come in the form of family drama distraction can come through your children it can come through your spouse it can come through your job. It could just be anything. Your pet peeves. Your pet peeves can be your distraction. Some things, guys, just let it be. Leave it alone. Because what can happen is the enemy can get you so involved in a matter that you've been completely deviated. And I cannot help but remember, I want to say it was Joshua. No, I don't think Joshua was the one that did this. Uh, it was Joshua, and it was Joshua chapter 8. I want to say it was Moses. Hold on. So it was Joshua, and it was uh, the city of Ai, the, you know, Ai, and... It was an ambush. So basically, long story short, uh, Joshua had sent some of the men of war down the night before and they hid around the walls of the city. They hid there from the night before. And then Joshua and his men went to the gates, okay, showed themselves to the men within the city. Uh, and basically for them to come out to battle with them. So they went out to battle with them. They fought with them. And uh, keep in mind Joshua and a group of other uh, men of war. They're, they're there and they lure them out. And they're fighting with them. And they, the children of Israel, who are fighting with these men, once they've lured them out, they start to pretend as if they're being defeated. So they start to run away, leading these men, leading the men of Ai into the wilderness with them to get them away from the city. So while they chase them, while they pretend to be defeated, run away, ran away, leading these men who's now chasing them away from the city and into the wilderness, once they get them into the wilderness and away from the city gates, the men of war that were already encamped around 
the city hiding, they were able to enter in and plunder the city because guess what? No one is there to guard the gate, guard the gate. They're busy running and chasing down who they thought they were defeating. And what happened to those men? Once they got out into the wilderness, away from the city, they turned around and looked and saw that the city was being plundered. Now the children of Israel who are fighting with them, who are pretending to be defeated, turn around and actually slaughter them out in the wilderness. Okay? And their city gets plundered. So this is exactly what the enemy is trying to do. Sometimes there's things that you're running and you're chasing it down and it's only set to be a distraction to lure you away and to get, to get you off the path. So not every battle, guys, is worth winning. Not every argument you need to engage in. Not everything you need to be involved in because the bottom line was they were drawn away. They were supposed to be guarding the gates of the city, these men, the men of I. But what they did, they got distracted. They decided to engage in a battle. They decided to engage in, I'm putting this for our terms now, in a conversation, in an argument. They decided to follow up a new project. Sometimes even it, your distraction can come up in the, the, in, you know, the form of some sort of a project, even church business. So you have to know not every church business and not everything that comes with a brand that says Jesus on it or God, even if it's a good work, you have to check with God and make sure this is what he wants you to do at this specific time. Because you can be doing good deeds, but it's the wrong time. It's not the time for you to be doing certain things. So that's where discernment comes in, guys. And I can't tell you how to do it and what to do. Because I don't know your specific, you know, game plan as far as what God has for you. But, and I truly believe this, and I always tell people this, whenever you hear anything, any word or any message, you have to always realize not every word is going to apply to you, to the letter. And then sometimes there'll be a portion of it that resonates with you, but the rest you have to find out from God. Very often I'll have people that be like, oh, what should I do? What should I do? And that's a, that is, you know, a law, a tall order for anyone to give to me. I am far away from you guys. I am in a whole different country for some of you all. You have the ability to get your specifics from God. I'm only sent as a messenger to give out information. And then what applies to you, it applies. What you may need to shelve, you may shelve. But when it resonates with you, you have to seek God as far as what you need to do. Every now and then the Lord may give me some guidance, but it is never like telling people you need to do this, you need to do that. No, because we have to get out of that habit of trying to get those intricate details from somebody else. And a lot of times people do that because they already know what God is telling them to do, but they don't have confidence in him or in themselves to know he's speaking to them. So then they feel like if I go, if I ask somebody else who I feel is close to God or who I feel has wisdom, if they confirm it, then, okay, God, I can believe you. No, we got to get out of that. So again, what the specifics are would be on certain things you're going to have to get that from God and nine times out of ten you already know what it is don't allow yourself to become distracted guys stay focused on the things of God stay focused on the things of God and the other thing that's just on my mind and tell you is to enjoy your life guys you don't have to be barricaded and, oh, Lord, I mean, yes, we're going to pray. Yes, we're going to seek God. Yes, we must give him, you know, reverence and honor daily and throughout our day. But sometimes, guys, you got to realize it's okay for you to take a walk. It's okay for you to go sit on, on the beach and, and just listen to the ocean, take a drive, whatever it is that you do. Do those things, guys. You know, sometimes it can be fearful. I've been there as well, looking at the world and everything that's going on. And the Lord is like, wherever you set your feet, there will be no harm and danger. And there will be no tragedies. There will be no mass shootings. There will be no, the pestilence will not come near you. And that's what you have to understand when you are a child of God. You understand? We still have to use wisdom. You know, we're not going to be like just 
going out late at night, walking down the alley because the Lord is with me. We got to use wisdom. But guys, to just do simple things like taking a walk, you pray and you ask the Lord, Lord, where can I go today? Father, lead me to a place that I can just go and take a walk or take a jog or whatever. Do these things, guys. Get some sun. Get Do something. Pull out a board game. <laughs> You know, for those of you that's doing that. God wants us to be confident in knowing that he is with us. He's going to protect us. Don't be afraid of the things that you see and you read about. All that's going on in the world. Because God has you covered. God has you covered. And getting back to the original text of the message is, do not allow yourself to be distracted. Do not allow yourself to be distracted. Distractions will come in different things. Sometimes people will begin to bring you their problems. And while we can be a guide and we can be a, 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 a we can encourage our brothers and sisters, you want them to be able to stay put in Christ. If every other day they're bringing you something new constantly, 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 it's different if they want to get some encouragement and, and things of that nature, but you'll know when they're sucking you dry. Don't allow yourself to be distracted. Don't allow yourself to get engaged in people's problems and situations to the point it's pulling you away. It's causing you to lose sleep. Don't be distracted. This sudden interest in you this love interest don't be distracted suddenly this person is saying oh now i see that you are for me don't be distracted by these things you're gonna know stay focused give god your time in your word and in prayer being vigilant and remember, you don't have to get into every argument. You don't have to engage in those things. You're going to know the distractions as it comes. It's the little things that's coming, those text messages. You know the deal. You know you know how this goes. You know how that, that those little, uh, those hot button words and things that's being said to you. You know when this person starts to call you and try to engage you in arguments. When this person says, hey, what's going on? You know the routine of this person that distracts you, that upsets you, that frustrates you. Y'all don't talk for a while or whatever the case is. And then they come around like nothing happened or try to engage you in a situation or try to pick up where they left off. We got to get to a time, guys, where you're like, you're not going to answer anything. You block things if you need to, even if it's just temporary. Sometimes you have to block some folks, guys, even if it's just for a certain period of time. While God brings you to a place of healing, being stronger, not being so caught up, not being so easily deterred by these individuals. And sometimes it's forever. But we have to focus our holy, our holy God is going to be returning soon. He's going to be coming to collect us. You do not want to be like the, you don't want to be, be the unwise virgins. Let's talk about why the unwise virgins did not have any oil. A lot of times we talk about the wise ones and what the wise one says, uh-uh, go get your own oil. You got to get to that point. Go get your own oil. But let's talk about the wise, the unwise virgins for a second. The wise virgins had oil to trim, had their oil and reserve. And they told the unwise ones who did not have anything, you need to go buy your own oil unless we don't have enough for the trip. But let's talk about the unwise virgins for a second. Sometimes what can happen with the unwise virgins that did not have enough oil, sometimes it's because they got depleted. They didn't use wisdom. They had good intentions. This is just me speaking and relating it to us now. I'm not saying this is what happened with those guys in the Bible. What I want to talk to you about is how you can end up not having oil. Because when you are not walking in wisdom, you will be using up your oil in every situation. 
Every time somebody call you crying, you, you're using up your oil for that. You don't understand how to encourage people, but lead them to God and know when to say, okay, enough is enough. You, if God can't work for you, if you're saying you praying to the Lord is not working, something's wrong. Either you have sin in your life still, you're being disobedient in some way, or you don't want to wait. You're growing impatient. Right? Sometimes people are being depleted in relationships that drains them. They're being depleted and get into them. The same old family arguments, same drama, same things going through stuff with their siblings, same, going through the same drama in relationships, wasting their oil in ministries and in places where you are not being utilized in the way God wants you to be utilized, but you're wasting your oil, standing there handing out usher fans at the door, you know, or your oil begins to deplete and drain because it's sitting stagnant in you and you become rusty and old and the things that you've been able to do, your gifts are just waning. Church drama, wasting your oil, you're just wasting yourself wasting going on different missions and doing things but you're doing so many things but god did not send you to these places it's a great idea it looks good but that's not what he told you to do wasting your oil through expending by expending your emotions and your heart and just wasting time there's a lot of people that's wasting time doing things they were not told to do there's a prophet, an unknown prophet that was sent to give a specific word. And the Lord told him, once you give this word, come on back. Don't go the same way you came. Go a different way and don't stop for anything. But another, but on his way back, another prophet just really, really kept talking to him and talking to him and talking to him. Even though that prophet was, was intent on following the commands of God, he ended up being able to, he ended up being, um, able to convince him and cause him to detour, take a detour, and that prophet lost his life. Wasted oil. Sometimes you can be on a path and it seems a right, seems right, because who distracted that prophet was another prophet that told him. Even though the prophet said, "No, the Lord told me not to, not to stop anywhere. I need to go back. I should not rest. I need to go back today." Another prophet comes to him and said, "Well, I also hear from the Lord and." Yeah, come and sit and eat. It seems right, did it not? But he ended up wasting his, wasting his oil. He ends up wasting his oil. Going in places and sitting where he should not have been. And so sometimes you can end up being in the position of the unwise virgins because you're not using wisdom. You're becoming distracted and you're wasting your oil and you'll find yourself being so far gone and trying to get back. It'd be hard if you ever get back. So with that, guys, I just want to say stay on the path. Do not become distracted. Recognize the tricks of the enemy. Keep yourself focused. Keep your eyes on God. Keep your steps on the right path. Do not go to the left. Don't go to the right, but go straight ahead. Do not lose your traction. Do not lose your focus. Do not allow yourself to be distracted. Keep looking straight ahead. All right, guys.